This video is in the form of a quiz, looking at an instrument approach into Santa Fe, New Mexico, and going through five questions to make sure you're fully confident flying the approach, no matter the scenario. Take the quiz with us, and let us know in the comments which ones you got right. Here's the approach plate for the RNAV in a runway 15. We'll focus in on the plan view, the profile view, and the minimum section. First, let's say our flight plan has us flying along Victor 62, coming from the west. This airway passes over the Santa Fe VOR, which is just to the south of the airport. There's a big note next to the feeder route saying that the procedure is NA for arrivals at the VOR along this airway flying eastbound, which is exactly what we're doing. The first question is, given the scenario, are we allowed to perform this RNAV approach? No, the procedure is not allowed for arrivals at the Santa Fe Vortac on Victor 62-263 eastbound. Yes, but we can't use the feeder route from the Santa Fe VOR. Yes, but we need to request radar vectors from the controller. Or no, we should request a different approach and circle to runway 15 if that's where we want to land. Take a few seconds and think. The answer is yes, but we can't use the feeder route from Santa Fe. The solid thin line pointing north from Santa Fe is a feeder route. It enables us to fly away from the VOR on track 343 to the CARS intersection, one of the initial approach fixes. It could be easy to interpret that note as a prohibition on flying the approach at all, but really what it applies to is the feeder route. This makes a little more sense when you look at the same approach on a Jeppesen plate. Here, note number one ties together the restriction and the feeder route, showing that it applies only to that. In order to do the approach then, we'll either need radar vectors or to be sent up to one of the initial approach fixes like CARS, but there's no need to request it. ATC will assign us the proper transition. Now let's say we're approaching from Zidane, the other initial approach fix. Question two, we're cleared for the approach from Zidane at 10,000 feet. What should we do when reaching CARS? Execute a course reversal with a direct entry, execute a course reversal with a parallel entry, turn left to track 172 degrees to FINAC, or hold it cars until instructed. The answer is we'll turn left to track 172, inbound on the approach towards Finac. There's a hold in lieu of procedure turn depicted at cars, but the route we're flying on from Zidane has a note saying no PT, meaning we ignore the course reversal, no procedure turn. We could request the course reversal anyways if we needed more time to lose altitude or something, but in the absence of any additional coordination, it's a straight in approach. Now let's say we're coming from the Northwest. Question three, you were instructed to fly direct to cars from the Northwest, this time at a higher altitude of 12,000 feet. ATC says you're five miles from cars, cleared RNAV 15 approach. What do you do? Descend to 10,000 and then turn right at cars to track 172 degrees. Fly over cars, begin a descent to 10,000 while executing a course reversal with a direct entry. Fly over cars, begin descent to 10,000 and turn right to track 172 degrees. Or fly over cars, execute a course reversal with a direct entry, cross cars again inbound on the approach, and then descend to 10,000. We need to fly over cars, then descend from 12,000 to 10,000 as we begin a course reversal, making a direct entry. We need to do the procedure turn coming in like this unless we were cleared straight in. 91175I says that since we're coming in on an unpublished route, we have to maintain our last assigned altitude until reaching a published portion of the approach. We were at 12,000. ATC will usually say maintain 12,000 until established. We didn't hear that here, but the rule still applies. The course reversal is depicted on the profile view like this showing that once we're established in the turn, we could fly at or above 10,000. So crossing cars is when we could start down. There's no need to do the full procedure turn and cross cars again before leaving 12,000 because the procedure turn altitude is 10,000. After passing cars, we can go down to our next minimum altitude of 9,000. Moving further along, we're at 9,000 feet, having passed cars again inbound and approach FINAC, the final approach fix. Question four, you have a WAS equipped GPS. What are your minimums for this approach? 6,569 MSL and it's a decision altitude. 6,569 MSL and it's a minimum descent altitude. 6,740 MSL and it's a decision altitude. Or 6,740 MSL and it's a minimum descent altitude.
The answer is 6,569 as a decision altitude. A WAS-enabled GPS allows us to fly a localizer performance with vertical guidance approach, or LPV. This gives us a minimum of 6,569 for all category aircraft, which is a decision altitude. We'll be following a glide slope down, similar to how we fly an ILS approach. Now we start towards FINAC, holding 9,000 until the glide slope comes in, and then begin following that down. We notice that our altimeter reads a bit low. Question 5. Although you're on the glide slope, it looks like we'll be below 7,440 at Seacrow. What should you do? Execute a missed approach. Advise tower and follow instructions. Ignore. The crossing restriction only applies when flying to LNAV minimums. Level off at 7,440 until crossing Seacrow, then start down again and reacquire the glide slope. It's a tricky one, but we should ignore our altimeter telling us we're below 7,440 and keep flying the glide slope. Notice the asterisk on the crossing altitude and the note saying it applies to the LNAV only. How can it be that following the glide slope has put us below 7,440? In non-standard conditions, especially a very hot day at high altitudes like this in New Mexico, the altimeter will read lower than true altitude. This is part of the temperature-based errors baked into our altimeter. We're not really too low. We're still on the glide slope, which is a three-degree path no matter what the weather conditions are. So let's keep following it down. Don't level off before crossing Seacrow, only to have to destabilize the approach and dive back down to the glide slope. That's the opposite of a stabilized approach and negates the whole purpose of flying with a glide slope. I hope this quiz was fun and helpful for you. Again, let us know what you got right or what you liked about it in the comments below. Also, check out all of our ground school courses on the website, flight-insight.com. See you soon.